Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my pleasure to bring you Pack versus Pack. Now, this has never been done on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. This has been done on a former channel, which I was part of before I launched the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council and I was doing my research to launch the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. So this is going to be something else. So I don't, th I think one or two of you who were subscribed over there know what the fuck this is. For the rest of you, this follows card versus card. If you don't know what the hell that is and this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, sit down, enjoy the video. This is something completely different. Honestly, I'm not knocking anyone. I don't think anyone else does this. So this is a treat. I like it. So in today's video, we are going to count down 10 cards from two separate packs, give them a score, one to 10, and from that, pick a winner of which set is better. You guys can go in the comment section, let me know what you want to see the next two packs versus, and this week, uh, this week's, this month's pack versus pack is Starstrike Blast versus the new challengers. It's the new kid on the block versus the, car, the set that Ryu always says should be motherfucking reprinted. So, this is going to be fairly long, just going to fair warn you. We're going to spend about a minute on each card. We're going to try to do it like 30 seconds a minute. Because this is going to be fairly fucking long and a lot to edit. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be spending a good chunk of the weekend getting this out for you. So, without further ado, Pack vs. Pack starts now. We are starting with Star Strike Blast. And to start with Star Strike Blast, we're going to start with Dragoonies. And the reason we're going to start with Dragoonies is because of the fact, I'm going to put one and two together. Sort of. <laughs> because Dragoonies are getting support in the next set in the form of a SPEAR! And Star Strike Blast was the first thing to give them support outside of Arsenal 3, and it gave them the support that they really needed to become a deck, and a deck that one day would take over the meta for a little while. A little while. Thank you, Patrick Hogan. So, we were talking about Dragoonie Vajriana, and basically it allows you to Synchro Climb. And by sacred climbing, it allows you to grab that Flonix, equip it to it, unequip the Flonix, and then go into a level 8 for no damn cost outside of the dukes that made this shit. <sighs> Get into that Stardust play and just control the board. Your opponent hates you for days and it's amazing. So that's our number one spot and I'm going to give it a score of 10. And the reason I'm giving it a score of 10, 1 out of 10, means it's perfect score, is because this was the perfect card for the archetype and exactly what they needed, that adrenaline rush into its bloodstream. So let's go for the second spot. Our number two spot is another Dragoonie in the form of Dragoonie Gay Dirk. I am just going to quickly jump on upon this. This was the other support card, not 100% as needed, like Vajriana. If you went Vajriana, you would need three. But as times have changed, we have used the Basically, we kind of boosted it up to two because of the stupid shit you can do with it. I heart it so good. So, I'm just going to quickly jump into this because you're going to be able to read the effect if you would like to. You can just pause the video and do that. You have the freedom to do that. Keep in mind. It will basically allow you to grab a winged beast or a dragon out of your deck and then send a card from your hand to the graveyard, which allows you to set up the Flonix or Achilles plays while grabbing a Dukes and basically going to Vajriana. Is a key component in setting that up now because we don't have Dragon Ravine. Fuck you, Konami. Just had to get that in there for someone who's going to say it. I'm going to give Gay Dirk a 8 out of 10. So we are at 18 points for Star Strike Blast. Let's continue. Let's no one's going to get mad at me giving Van these emptiness to 10. It's easy to jump over if you can jump over it with Raigeki MST. Raigeki, if you target a monster, let me just say that so everyone's correct on the same page. So I'm going to give it a 10 and we're going to move on to 4. Vanity's Emptiness, don't really have to fully talk about this one because you guys already know it's game defying right now. It's nearly everywhere, nearly, and basically just locks your opponent out of special summoning. So the point is, I think we can just instantly slap a, a 10 on this. No one's going to get mad at me giving Vanity's Emptiness a 10. It's easy to jump over if you can jump over it with Raigeki MST. Right, Gacky, if you target a monster, let me just say that so everyone's correct on the same page. So I'm going to give it a 10 and we're going to move on to number 4. At the number 4 spot, we have Skullmeister. And Skullmeister basically is that effect filler for your opponent's graveyard when they go to activate something. This was key component against Dark Worlds when Dark Worlds were meta for like 5 minutes. Not even hating on Dark Worlds, it's just really fucking true. They were like, like meta for like 5 minutes. They got one top and... Someone wrote in the graph, point of 
perspective. See, this guy, that guy is back there. The guy back there just coughed. He's telling me how bad Dark Worlds were. He goes, uh, yeah. Because he doesn't want to say it. But seriously, Skull Meister is key component and so is to certain decks, you know, cock blocking them out. So we're going to give Skull Meister a 9 out of 10 for its solid usage. And keep in mind, we could also honorably mention Jerome Lockbird, and we could honorably mention a few other things, but that's what we do next time for him. So let's move on to the number five spot. And at the number five spot, we have Swift Scarecrow. For all those times that you basically don't want your opponent attacking into, or the times you want to set up Redox, or the times you want to play Mystic Piper, Swift Scarecrow is your best friend. And if we ever get back into an OTK format, this is also going to be your best friend again because, hey, it's a machine. You can search it out with Gyrgya, you know, Gyrgya and X, get it to your hand. Just a thing you could do. Um, but not every deck's going to be able to go Gyrgya and X and pull it out. But for the decks that can, it's a great usage and just another fucking awesome card. And then you can go Mass Chameleon to the turn of peace. Holy shit, it's great. So where are we scoring it? We're scoring it at 9 out of 10. Let's move on to number six. Number six, I think we all know extremely fucking well, is Glow Up Bulb. And the reason it's Glow Up Bulb is because Glow Up Bulb is what sold Star Trek Blast at the time when Star Trek Blast came out. No one was looking at Vanny Zinthius at the time. We were all looking at Glow Up Bulb like, ah, ah, you know, just fucking drop Quasar. Or before we got to Quasar. Was it Quasar? No, Quasar wasn't out at that point. Just about. Not there yet. All right, so Glow Up Bulb. Fucking amazing, metal top card your deck. We're still fucking using it, but not meta defying right now. It's just a good one of, you know, little tech. It's not game breaking like it was back then. So where are we scoring it? We're scoring it at a 10 out of 10, perfect score. Because it is honestly such a great card. Let's move on to the number seven spot for Star Trek Blast. And at the number seven spot, before I go and take a break to record more shit over at the computer and charge us back up, we have turning. Tuning is the reinforcements of the army for Synchron monsters, and you already know I'm going to be talking about them because Synchron's getting that structure deck. So I had to throw Tuning on this list as an honorable mention. In, well, not an honorable mention, just a straight fucking card that we're talking about with Beck versus Beck, because it is what defined Star Trek Blast for quite a while and had that nice $25 price tag. So it was one of those things you were hoping to pull out just to sell or to use. And tuning honestly helped define during the plant synchro format, uh, synchro, uh, plant synchro format, alongside with glow up bulb. It was one of those things that you saw a lot of. So where are we scoring tuning? We are scoring it a perfect ten out of ten because its usefulness and its card pool that it can search out. It's a great card and it helps you set up by sending the top part of your deck. Now that's not always the best thing, but hell, it speeds your fucking deck up. So most of the time, it's good. All right. Let's go on to number eight. In at number eight is Different Dimension Ground. And honestly, this is one that has started seeing more play, I believe about three months ago it started seeing more play. Um, and it actually comes from Star Trek Blast. Believe it or not, it really does. And it's a great fucking card. Uh, it's basically like a one-time macro. You know, you flip it up and then anything this turn will basically go to hell. So your opponent activates their Mathematician or their Shadol effects or the light storms, you basically flip this up and tell them, fuck no. So, it's pretty straightforward. You can read the effect on your screen right now. Just make it bigger. You can do it. And uh, pause it. We'll wait. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because, honestly, it's a very, very solid card. And I just really want to jump ahead to number 9, which we're doing now. In at number 9 is very, 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 very underrated card is Heat Wave. And... Basically, you cannot summon any effect monsters, you can only set them until the end phase, well, the, uh, your next turn. So, I, I really like this card, I feel it hasn't gotten enough love yet. Hopefully, one day it'll find a nice home with someone, you know, a nice deck. I feel this is uh, the one card that can actually help normals become a thing again. This is, this is Cold Wave for monsters, let's put it that way, it's fucking amazing. But I'm only going to give it a 7 out of 10, sorry. Disappoint, 7 out of 10. In at number 10 is Kairakuri Shogun with the set uh, MLD. I believe it's the level 7 one. It's a better one. And it's pretty straightforward. Nets you a Kairakuri, allows you to change battle position. It's amazing. And you should actually give a fuck about it because it basically defines Kairakuri's 
And a lot of them might be a tier one deck for quite a while with Gyrgya and just Machina and just pretty much everything. It's it's great. And a lot of your synchro climb, just like um a lot of, a lot of this set was synchro climbing. But I'm really good because I want to jump into challengers, I'm gonna give it eight out of ten, very solid pace. And that will put Star Strike Blast at a score of 89. So to, for the new challengers to win this, they have to score better than 89. Can they do it? Oh, I gotta get a 90. That's it. Let's go for it. And number one for new challengers, who's talking about new challengers right now, is the Exceed Rebellion Dragon. And I honest to God feel this is very, very underrated. And it doesn't get enough, hello, it doesn't get enough attention, in all honesty, because a lot of people just disregard it. Deck Devastation Virus Target, Epidemic Virus Target. Besides that, Johnny Beat Stick, jump over shit. Fucking get big, get pumped up, and let's wreck shit. I mean, you can get this in three rarities. Ulti, Secret, and Ghost. What's not to love about this card? It's dark as well, so, you know, you play them with Chaos decks, you get them dark food, and it's rank four, so, flexibility, amazing. I'm gonna give it a straight seven out of 10, and I would have given it a higher score, but I have to be fair, it's not super useful because it can run into a bunch of trap cards and that sucks and it takes down its playability just a tad bit. But with that said, let's move on to number two for this. And at number two is Edge Imp Scissors. And honestly, this is another one of those underrated cards. I'm going to get to the meta stuff towards the end of the, uh, the new challengers, the end of the half of it. But I really want to talk about Edge Imp Scissors. Edge Imp Scissors. Sorry, it's like two in the morning. Edge Imp Scissors because I feel a lot of people do not give this card enough attention. Because it's basically a rank 3 target for Tori Guy. You can bring it out, you can get it out of your deck by Skarm. And it's basically like Plague Spreader, but for rank 3 access. And you can also use it for tributing. So if you're smart enough about it, you can utilize this perfectly. But because, again, just like Exceed Rebellion Dragon, I have to be fair, 7 out of 10, let's move on to number 3. In at number three is Rescue Hamster. By the way, I also left Deku Saka Seka off the uh, list, mainly because I'm kind of biased and I feel it's not really all that good. I mean, I understand it's a giant cold wave. I'm mentioning it here. I know it's a giant cold wave, but my stance on it is it can be easily ran over with that 1700 attack. That's my stance. So because I'm a little bit biased on that, I left it off just to make this fair. But I want to talk about a hidden gem and what a lot of people are starting to realize is Rescue Hamster has the potential to be busted. For those of you who don't know the effect, you can banish this card from your Pendulum Zone and add two face-up Pendulum cards with the same name from your extra deck to your hand. You can only use the effect of Rescue Hamster once per turn. Its monster effect reads during the turn this card is normal summon. If there is a face-up level 5 or lower Pendulum Monster in your extra deck, you can tribute this card, choose one face up level 5 or lower pendulum monster in your extra deck, and special summon two monsters from your deck with the same name as that, but their effects are negated, also destroyed during the end phase. It allows you to go into a rank play. It allows you to go to exceed. That's what I'm saying here. This card opens exceeds for pendulums. You don't think it's good? Oh, well, you may want to reevaluate that. It may not be great right now, but give it a little bit of time and this shit will be busted as fuck. Just like the rest of its rescue brother and, and rescue hamster looks to do that all over again. So, because I am judging it on future and now, I am giving it a solid 8 out of 10. I really do like this card. The number 4 spot on my list here goes to Herald of Arc Light. Because Neocloths, I mentioned this during the dual videos with Gnome Lights when I was actually versing them. It allows Neocloths to have another searcher because they can utilize that from the extra deck. It also allows deck sick of Brunel level 4 to have a one-sided macro. And you can actually use this in Worms and basically make it nearly invincible where your opponent will lose everything they want to do to get over it. Because I'm in such love with this card, and because I think it's really fucking great, even if it only goes through like $2, I'm giving it a solid 10 out of 10. Woo! Let's get that woo in there. All right, move on to number five. So our number five spot is going to go to something meta, which is Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss. Well, you get the idea. One turn or one more non-turn, and it means he's generic, level six. And you can only control one Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss 
Once your turn, you can discard one and burning a fist card, then target one card your opponent controls in the graveyard and shuffle it right back into the deck. That breaks setup. It hurts light swarms if light swarms ever wanted to come into the meta. It's going to poop on them, and anything that needs graveyard setup, it's going to poop on them. But the, its normal 2500 stat on level 6 is pretty fucking good. He's got basically the stats of Summoning Skull, uh, Summoning Skull, Summoned Skull. And that hasn't been seen in quite a while. I know some of you are going, <laughs> I need to mention some of the skull. I'm getting old school with this shit. If this card is on the field, it's destroyed by Battle Card Effects. Since the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can only use the effect of Virgil and then nail the Rock Star, the Burning Vest, once per turn. I really like this card extremely a lot. You know why? It's light, which means it's that much easier to have Chaos Abuse inside of Burning Abyss. And it just gives Burning Abyss one more thing that they can utilize to fuck you over. So, I don't think I need to say much more than that. 10 out of 10. Let's move on to number 6. And at number 6 is something I like from Monarchs, Heretics, and Chaos Dragons. I'm trying to make these lists very diverse to go from meta to non-meta. And just give you everything that you may want to need to know and you can learn something. We're talking about number 39, Utopia Beyond. Because it is Batman Beyond of Utopia. And this damn thing is much more better than its predecessor. And basically it's a rank 6. We're not caring about the second effect here. Just putting that out there. We're mainly going after its stats and its first effect. 3,000 motherfucking attack. Light. Drop that on us. Touch that shit. It's so good. <laughs> so dirty. Um, basically you can drop all your opponent's monsters to zero. Opening up an OTK play. Heretics are known for this shit, and this just makes it that much easier for them to do so. In a deck like Monarchs, anything that's over 3,000 would easily be pooped on, as long as you can use this to utilize against that. And in Chaos Dragons, well, watch the dual videos, you see me bust that shit out, it's gonna be funny as hell. So, I don't think I need to go much further than that, those three decks love it. 9 out of 10, personal preference. Let's go into number 7. All right, we're going to be doing the Shadol's back-to-back, so we're going to start with the Fire Shadol Kreista, or Kreista? I, I'm terrible at pronouncing it. Um, Kreista, okay, so we're talking about Kreista. Artwork is gorgeous, but we're not here talking about fucking artwork. It is the Fire Shadol, and its effect reads, must be Fusion Summon, obviously. During either player's turn when your opponent would special summon a monster, while you have a Shadol card in your hand, you negate the summon. If you do, destroy that monster and send one Shadol card from your hand to the graveyard. So that alone allows you to utilize the secondary and first effects of Shadols and get them into your graveyard and do stupid shit with them, and basically just allows you to abuse for days. You can only use the effect of El Shadol Grista. 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 Once per turn. I don't know why I'm saying it that way. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol spell and trap add to your hand. Pretty. Pretty uh, normal. So this is your negation summoner, but we have window, so it kind of a little let down. So in all honesty, I'm still going to give it the score that I put down for it because I still think it's amazing. If window was to get limited, and we're getting the equip card that basically turns the shadow's attributes to different attributes, then this would be used more. So I'm gonna just for that reason alone, just for that reason alone, I'm gonna give. Grice the a 9 out of 10, and we're going to move into our number 8 spot. We're nearly done! Don't take personal effect uh, offense for me saying this because I do not want to butcher that name. I'm going to say the Earth Shadow, which basically is utilized by Global. Now, if you could find a way to utilize this in Sheena, this shit would be hilarious because you could drop that limit removal with this bitch. <laughs> During either player's turn, when a special summon monster activates its effect while you control a Shadol card in your hand, or you have, or you have not control, you can negate the activation due to destroy that monster, and then you send it from the hand to the graveyard. This is just like its fire brother, and it's got that 3,000 defense, it's bulky as fuck, and it's got that 2,600 attack, and then, like I said, you can use Limit Removal because it is machine! hi -oh! You can negate the activation if you do. Uh, you can only use the effect once a turn, and it recovers the spell or trap. Easily scored. I don't really need to go further than that. 9 out of 10 again. Very solid card. Not really going to be used too much in normal Shadows. Uh, if someone can make Shadol Machina or Shadol Girgia, there you go. That's fucking amazing. Let's move on to number 9. And then number 9 is the one, the only Killer Fort disc. You cannot special summon monsters other than Quill monsters. This effect cannot be negated. All Quill monsters you, gain, you control gain 300. 
It's got that 2800, so under skill drain, it's going to be amazing. And it's a level 7. And keep in mind, it has a pendulum skill of 1, so it allows them to use the pendulums efficiently. Its monster effect will read, you can normal summon this card without tributing, but then its normal summon stats become level 4 or 1800, and skill drain would just reset that back up. If this card was normal summon or set, it is unaffected by activated effects from any monster whose original level rank is lower than this card's current level. So anything under 7 is going to take a butt whooping. <laughs> And then basically if this card is true by tributing a quill monster, you can special on two quill monsters from your deck and then destroy them during end phase, which allows it to go into your rank. Which is just stupid. So I don't think I need to go any further than that. It's extremely good. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. Oh holy shit! Where you gave it a 10 out of 10. Let's go into that final card and see what I give it. The final card and what will bring this video to an end is Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. Send two face up Burning Abyss monsters you control to the graveyard and target up to three cards on the field and destroy those targets. I really like this card, but honestly, I hate the fact they have to be face up. I mean, it's not that hard to do that, but if this was more like Icarus Attack, you could probably give it a higher score. So I'm gonna give it an eight because it is solid and I can't take that away from it. So the final tally scored is 87 out of 100. Now, as I said, each card's rated on the 10 point scale, and Star Strike Blast scored 89. So the final, the final scores, and you can agree or disagree, is 89 for Star Strike Blast and 87 for basically New Challengers. New Challengers is an amazing got name set, but it just could not live up to Star Strike Blast's history. Star Strike Blast got a lot of you know, things that are just a little bit better. And as I said, New Challengers most likely would have won if it hadn't been for Deku Seca, but like I said, I'm not a big fan of it. I probably would have given it like a 7 or 8. It's a solid card, but again, I'm not fully big on it. I feel it's one of those trend things where everyone's kind of running it because it's really good and it's a giant cold wave. Don't get, take offense to that. It's just easy to jump over because it's 1700 attack. Anyway, I'm ready for the year council. Let me know what you want to see on the next pack versus pack. And we'll be back next month with pack versus pack. But we'll be back tomorrow because this is the end of our holiday four day weekend sadness. And I'll be secretly working on stuff for you. So come on back tomorrow and we'll have new videos for you. Sorry, this is the only video out today. It just. It, these take a while to edit. This and card versus card, they take a little while to edit for me and a long time to render. So I hope you enjoyed this, and as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button if you did so I know to keep this going. If not, then just tell me in the comment section. That's it. Just say, I didn't really like this. But I'm pretty sure most of you probably will. So thanks for watching. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe only if you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you later. Peace!